Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on how to use HTML or hypertext markup language, whatever you want to call it. In this presentation, I am going to go over every single tag in HTML in one video. So just by watching this one video, you will completely understand HTML. And just to get the basics done with, a web browser reads HTML, which is just a text file filled with tags. HTML is not a programming language. And the tags are just words or individual characters in angled brackets that tell the browser what text needs emphasis emphasis, what is a paragraph, where to get images, or how to take a visitor to another page if they should click on a tag. There are 89 total tags, but for the most part you're only going to use 20. And to start off any HTML document, you have to define what version of HTML you are using. This isn't something that you have to do, but it is something that would be required if you were trying to write compliant HTML. And this isn't anything that you really need to memorize, you could just copy it and there are links in the underbar to everything I type here. And I actually did this presentation, a version of it anyway, in a previous tutorial. But GB1948 told me that that tutorial sucked. So that's why I'm redoing it in my new format. And that's that. So this is telling the browser that you are using transitional form of HTML in this document right here. Then, of course, you would type in HTML, and this is telling the web browser that this is an HTML document, but of course that's what this tells it already. And you could, of course, cut this out altogether and just use HTML, but we're going to be as compliant as humanly possible. Then, I like to tab in everything as I go along. You're going to define the head section of your HTML file, and in this section, everything that lies between this opening head tag and this closing head tag, is going to define what type of content can be found on this HTML page. I'm going to define what language I'm going to be using, as well as the character set that I'm going to be using in this document right here. Content is equal to text, forward slash HTML, semicolon, character set. And this is based off the fact that I'm typing in English, or this information is in English. And then you want to always close off these tags. If you get in the practice of doing this, you are going to have no problem converting to XHTML, which I'll cover next. But you have to understand HTML before you can start writing XHTML. There's very little difference, but there are differences. Then you can define right in your HTML document styles. This is frowned upon with XHTML. So for example, if I want all of my H1 tags to automatically get defined with the color red, that is how I do it, right like that. And then of course, what do I do? I close off the style tag after I'm done with it. And of course, I can also link to a text document or a CSS file that has a whole bunch of these styles inside of them. And how I do that is with link, and I have to tell it that it's a style sheet, and here, CSS file, and then anything that follows after H reference is a link to a location on the internet. Well, since styles.css is stored in a folder that is the same folder as learnhtml.html, the document I'm working with, I can just put that here. Also, I could put www.website.com, da 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 da, and link to any document. And I want to close that off. Another common thing that you'll find defined in the header section is a description of what is in, on this website. Content is equal to, and you're going to use this same format, name, and then give it a name, and then followed by content. You can define as many meta tags as you want. It's just additional information on the website. That's all meta tag is. Bob's Hardware, and then close off your tag. And then another common meta tag. Again, name is equal to, keywords, content is equal to, and then you can put hammers, nails, blah, 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 whatever else you want to put in there. Those are going to be keywords. And then Probably the only other common one, it's not even that common, would be author. Close off that tag. And then the final thing that you will commonly see in the header section is a title. See, these are all just tags. That's all it is. Welcome to Bob's Hardware. Of course, it would be much better to put keyword tags that you are targeting here. And that's it. That is what you will find in the header section in HTML for the most part. Now what you're going to define is everything that's going to be in the body, what's going to show up in the HTML over here. And you do that with the body tag. Like I said, I'm going to go through all the different things available. So first you have what are called H1 tags. And I'm just going to go H1 inside of here, close this off like that. 
And there are six of these guys. So just to make my life a little bit easier, there's an H2 tag, and this is just defining different sizes of text. And you can see right here, this is red H1. Why is it red? Because we told the browser that's how we wanted it to find, but you can see as the tag sizes change for these H1 defined pieces of text, that the text over here on the right side of the screen decreases. Okay, so as it goes up, H1 is the biggest, H6 is the smallest. And then you have the abbreviation tag, and what that's going to do is, let's say you abbreviate something. So you say, as soon as possible. Okay, so you want as soon as possible to show up on the screen if somebody puts their mouse over an abbreviation like that. And I'm also going to define an acronym because it's similar. Title is equal to. I'm actually going to do exactly the same thing here. Jump over here, and you can see, whenever I put my mouse over top, as soon as possible pops up here on the screen. See? And then the same exact thing pretty much happens with both of these tags. And let me define the bold tag. And you define that just like this, bold. And then you have the big tag, kind of similar. And then I'm also going to show you the break tag. What this does is it forces a line break. You define one of these guys. And you can see over here, two different other styling formats. And now you see that bold and big are on separate lines because BR, with the closing bracket here, is going to force there to be a new line. Then you have block quote. What that's going to do is it's actually going to indent the text. And you can see how it indented that text right here. Then you have the center tag, the emphasis tag, which is just like an italic tag. You can see that there are some tags that do pretty much identical things. Here's italic, and you can see center tag, I like italic, and me too. See, they're identical. They both show up the same on the screen. Here, just let me enlarge that. Then you have the paragraph tag, and what that does is it just forces a new line, just like the break tag does after it prints out the paragraph. So, big and brown. Then if you'd like to define a quote without actually using quotes, you do it with the Q tag. And then if you want to do what's called a strike through, just put an S inside of a tag, right like that. Small, and you have strong, and you can see over here what those all look like. I'm a quote, I've been struck, I feel small, I'm strong. And then just to finish these guys off, you have subscript and superscript. And those are all the different ways that you can style text inside of HTML, just like that. So now you know all those. Let's jump on to image tags now. If you want to define an image or pull an image from anywhere on the internet, this is how you do it. You start off with IMG and then source is equal to, and then you want to define the location of that image, wherever it is on the internet. With alt, we're going to provide text that's going to explain exactly what this is. And then if you want to also define the height that this is displayed in, you just do that with height. If you want to define the width, you just do it like that. And if you don't define it, it'll just stay whatever the default is. And then of course, you want to close that off. And you can see it grabbed that image and it shot it here on the screen. That's pretty much all you need to know about working with images in HTML. Now I'll go over all the different types of list types. First, you have the definition list, and it's probably better to just show it to you here starts off with DL and it works just the way you would think it does. DT, you're going to define the thing you're going to provide a definition for. And then with DD, you define the actual definition. And you can continue on from there. I'm just going to stop it right there. And then after that, you have ordered lists and that starts off with OL, right like that. LI, LI, and then close that off. That's an ordered list. And then you have unordered lists. UL, it starts off with and then inside of it, you use li again. So I'm just going to copy that. And you can see right here the way that this works. Bicycle has two wheels. This is your definition. This is your ordered list. See, it puts numbers inside of there. And you have your unordered list, which puts bullets inside of there. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about lists in HTML. So let's get rid of this. Now I'm going to go over everything you need to know in regards to creating links, or what are called anchor tags in HTML. A, H reference. Remember, this is a reference to a location on the internet that I want the person to be sent to. If they click, close that off. Then you have target, and here I'm going to define target as underscore blank, and what that's going to do is it's going to force this web page when clicked on, whenever the link is clicked on, to open in a separate tab in the browser, or a separate window, depending upon how your browser is set up. And if you do not put blank inside of here, you could also put self like this, and what it would do is open in the currently opened window instead. And here you would define 
what the link is actually going to say, and then you want to close it off with a closing bracket right there, and you can see that it shows up right here. So let's say I wanted to create a table, then you can type in summary, which is going to give a brief explanation of what the table contains. You can also define a caption right like that. Then you want to start off your table with TR, which is going to define a row, and then TH is going to define each one of those columns. So Saturday, close those off, close off your row, copy, road bike, and ran. Yes, I'm very into exercise, hardly. And then of course you want to define the end of your table. And you can see over here, now there's no styling around this table because I'm working you towards understanding XHTML, which requires that all styling be done with style sheets. But you can see here is your caption, here is your row of information, and then there is an additional row of information. And then the final thing you're going to do in HTML is create what are called forms. And what this is going to do is it's going to, to accept input from a user of your website, and it's going to send it to a PHP script for processing, for example. And if you use the post method, the information being passed is actually going to be passed within what's called the header section of the HTML file and not displayed in the URL. And if you use the get method, information is going to be passed in the URL itself. For the most part, it's considered good form to pass information using the post method. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to define what information is going to be placed inside of here. And then we're going to define that we want to create a text input area. And we're going to give whatever value is entered in there the name email. And we're going to define that the size to be displayed is going to be 40 characters in length. And you could also use max length inside of here, but I'll save that for a later tutorial. And you can see what it prints out here. And the user could come in and enter text right here inside of here and then send it to mail2.php. If you'd like them to be able to enter large amount of information, then you would use what's called a text area input tool. And all you would do to create that is instead of putting input type text, we're going to type in text area. And we'll define how many columns we want this guy to have how many rows and the name it will be associated with whatever information they enter in here. And then this would be default text that would show up whenever this is actually loaded. And you can see how that shows up on the screen instead as a big box for entering text and then there's default text. Let's just jump back to here. Let's say I wanted to allow the person to enter this information and not show on the screen. Instead of text, I'm going to type in password. And of course, this is often used for password input. And then you, of course, have what are called radio buttons. And with a radio button, you're going to define a default value associated with it. So let's just put home inside of here. And I'm just going to copy that. And here I'm going to put work in. Reload, and you can see that these are radio buttons where you can only select one or the other. And then you have your checkboxes. Find it with checkbox, give it a variable name, assign a value, and we'll just put hate inside of here again. And you can see that puts checkboxes on screen. And the final way to accept user input would be the select drop downs. And with them, you just type in select and give it a name. Select input, close that off. Option value equal to love select I love and then close off that and you can put I hate <laughs> and there are your two options in using select boxes and the only other thing that's left over in learning HTML is how to send this information and how you would do that is by creating a send button and that is just input type is equal to submit and then value is the words that are going to show up on your button. Whenever anybody hits that submit button, that information is going to be submitted to this file right up here, all the information that was selected inside of there. And to finish off, of course, you would close the form tag. And the only other thing that you might want to pass in this form would be a hidden field. You find that with input type equal to hidden. And this is a value that is going to be passed along, but is not going to be displayed on the website. Common thing to do is to pass a value that says that this has been submitted. So there is every single HTML tag that is used on a regular basis. I know it's a long tutorial, but you know it all now. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.